Hey kids, let me know in the comment window, I'm just pouring myself some wine, if you guys can hear me, that's the only way I know is if you guys comment because I'm basically sitting here in my office by myself <laughs> drinking some wine. I hope that's not a problem. Hold on a minute. Had to close my door so we're all alone in here. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope you guys are getting ready to have a little wine with me. I'm excited to introduce you to a couple of organic wines that you're going to be very excited about. And I'm going to put the link in the window so you can see what we're tasting and check it out if you want to pick up a couple of bottles of it once you find out more about it. So hit me up in the comment window if you can hear me, see me. If you're drinking wine with me, somebody chat me up in the window. I can see there's three of you here. So just give me a thumbs up if you can see and hear me and see my delicious rosé I'm getting ready to take a sip of. Mm. I love it. So who's all here? I don't know. I can't uh, see in the comment window, but let me know. Uh, all right, Pilar, thank you. You can hear and see me. Awesome, this is the only one I know. And Pilar is an amazing woman of style. She does great Facebook videos as well, so you definitely wanna follow her and she'll have closet conversations with you where tonight we're just gonna have a little talk about wine and about my upcoming Wine Down Wednesday series that's gonna start next week. We're gonna have virtual wine tastings together every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and the first week we're going to talk French wines then we're going to move on to Oregon the following week and then end up with red white and bubbly so thank you for being here Pilar and Vintage 901 thank you so much for being here I'm really excited I don't I would love to know in the chat window what you guys if I look down that's what I'm doing what you guys are drinking right now it doesn't have to be wine okay because it's just been a day for me today um I know just like all of you, it's up and down and there's just so much going on. And some days you feel like you got it all under control and other days, oh, you just uh, have to have a little breakdown before you break through. So <laughs> today was here. Oh, Kristen's here and Kristen is the amazing person who introduced me to, I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm sipping before I tell you about my upcoming wine classes and how you can join me next week. But she introduced me to these amazing wines from Scout and Cellar. And Scout and Cellar is both a wine club and a wine retailer of clean crafted wines. And the amazing woman, Sarah, uh, who founded the company, wanted to create wines that were organic, chemical, pesticide free, handcrafted from all over the world. And what I'm tasting right now, and I actually have a red to taste too, is the Field House Rosé. And it's got Zinfandel, Grenache, and Syrah. It's from Mendocino, California. It is a dry rosé, which is the kind I love the most. You can see I have my screw cap for easy, quick pouring. Um, I really, really enjoy it. I'm enjoying it right now. I believe it or not, I don't know about you guys, but... <laughs> I feel like I've made 800 meals over the course of the last couple weeks. Uh, many of you know my husband is a chef and he uh, is, you know, chefs cooking, it's essential. So I've been doing a lot of the cooking around here. And tonight I made a shrimp tortellini, tortelloni with pesto and it was delicious with the field house rosé. And so Sarah uh, Shadonix, who created this Scout and Cellar, uh, travels the world, connects with growers here in the States, overseas, and really makes sure everything is clean. All of the sulfites are at the very minimum level for organic of 100 parts per million. And this just has great strawberry, cherry, crisp acidity, great with seafood, with salads, um, I like to say as a joke, breakfast, but <laughs> who, 
Who knows? It depends on the day here, right? Um, hey, Denise, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. Mom, Jeannie, thank you for joining me. Justin, woohoo! He's making a lot of meals and doing a lot of online concerts. So if you f follow Justin, you are super going to love him because he's such a talented songwriter, singer, and guitarist. Follow him because he's doing free concerts all the time. And uh, Denise is drinking Pinot Noir from Kendall Jackson. Very cool. Uh, Aperol Spritz, Pilar, you know I love me an Aperol Spritz. Aperol Spritz, if you don't know, is made from three parts Prosecco, uh, two parts Aperol liqueur, which is an Italian liqueur, a blood orange liqueur, and one part um, of club soda, sparkling water, something like that. And it's one of my favorite warm weather months, and it's sunny here. Maybe not as warm as I would like, but it is absolutely a great drink. Aperol Spritz. If you have some Prosecco, get yourself some Aperol liqueur, little sparkling water. You are golden. So who else is here? We have Jerry and Kristen's mom. Hi, Kristen's mom. How are you? So uh, if you guys scroll up in the comments, you can see the link to the Scout and Cellar. Now, all uh, honesty, if you use that link and you end up joining the club or you can just buy the wine outright, you don't need to have any kind of subscription. Um, if you guys, you know, buy some stuff, I might get a free bottle of wine. That's what Kristen tells me. And Kristen has set up this business for herself to sell these amazing wines, which I'm super, super impressed with this first one. I'm going to taste a, a Syrah here in a minute. Uh, along the way right now, I, I know we have about uh, 20 people here. If you have any wine questions, throw them in the chat window because I just would love to make this really valuable for you guys. Um, also, yeah, let me just whine about some quarantine stuff, right? Uh, I know all of us, you know, are dealing with hair stuff. I miss my hairdresser, Noel. Some of us are getting um, gray roots. I'm getting dark roots. <laughs> I am dying for my girl, Christy, to give me a pedicure. Another thing that I'm really, really missing. Um, but, you know, all of this for the greater good. Stay home, stay safe, and hopefully this is going to... Uh, come to fruition very very soon but the one thing we can still do at home together and now that we're all sort of embracing this virtual culture is we can taste wine together um, in addition to being chemical and pesticide free what I thought was kind of cool when I was reading uh, about the company Scout and Cellar is that this is the Syrah but they don't use any foil because there's really no reason for it they use um, the corks they use are eco-friendly and they use a lighter weight bottle. So when they're shipping these things, this is the Fieldhouse Rosé I'm drinking right now. When they're shipping, it's taking up less poundage, less gasoline is used on the transportation. And so it's just better for the environment. Let's see who else has. So Greg Kramer, I think, might be here. Uh, hope, hope so. And uh, what are you guys drinking? I only heard about a few of you. Okay, Kristen's doing a Scout and Cello Pinot Noir. Perfect. Denise already said she's doing Pinot Noir as well. How do you drink wine through a mask, Denise? Uh, I, I guess I'll find out. In Maryland, I don't know about you guys that are out of state. Let me, Hit me up and let me know. Saturday at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. or something like that it becomes mandatory to wear a mask in any retail stores. So um, I know we three here in the family have a mask, but there are some great videos out there. If you don't have one, you can make them out of a t-shirt, out of a scarf. There's a lot of different things you can do. Yeah, Greg, hello back. June, hey, how are you? We're tasting some uh, Fieldhouse Rosé from Scout and Cellar, June, and, and I'd love to know what you're tasting right now but before I move to our Syrah and take any questions June's got a Sauvignon Blanc any questions you have about wine I want to tell you about something really really exciting I don't know you know if you're working from home if you're maybe not working right now or you're trying to figure out like me as a small business how you can take your business and continue to do it in this crazy situation right so I really have been thinking long and hard after almost everything on my calendar got, got uh, cleared for now. How can I still continue to taste with you and share great wine education and keep helping you guys learn and taste and be together? 
And since in the past I have done some virtual wine tasting classes, uh, I thought, let's do it again. Let's do it live. So I decided I was going to start Wine Down Wednesdays. They're going to start this coming Wednesday, the 22nd. They're going to be at 7 p.m. just like this. And it'll be um, a, a French springtime in Paris class next week. The week after, an Oregon Pinot party. And the week after that, a red, white, and bubbly with some great wines for backyard cookouts socially distance, of course. And each class is $20, or you can buy all three for $50. When you sign up, I send you a list of wines and links to have the wines shipped to your house. If you happen to live locally uh, near me in Talbot County, Easton, Maryland, we're gonna have all the wines available for pickup in a pack at Hair of the Dog Wine and Spirits, uh, the amazing partners I have over there. And so super excited wherever you are, you can join me via a Zoom webinar and you'll get all the information on how to do that. You'll get all the info on the wines you need and then we'll just do this. We'll get on our virtual video chat. I'll tell you about the wines we're tasting like our rosé, which I think I mentioned was Zinfandel, Grenache and Syrah. Um, very uh, much of the Zinfandel in there, 80%. Um, but this is a dry rosé, which finally people are getting and loving. Uh, 15 years we've been trying to get you people to drink rosé. Um, yes, Jeannie says she's going to be in the class on the 22nd. Christine's here. Hey, Christine in New Jersey. I'm so glad you're here. She signed up for all three. And Christine, I sent you your list of wines today. I hope you received that. And if you are signed up for the classes, you should have gotten your list of wines already. Um Rachel Martin, I love that. Uh, your wines are at Hair of the Dog. She have she has Oceano wines, which are deli delicious and amazing, and has ties to my area here in Talbot County. Rachel, we should do a virtual wine tasting together. Send me an email. And let's sum th something up. Maybe the both of us tasting your wines together virtually. I'd love to do that. So anyway, I hope you guys are loving this uh, idea of rosé. Let, hit me up in the chat window. Let me know if you guys already are fans of rosé all day. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me. I'm getting thirsty. Denise is going to be with me next week. All right. Christine, what are you drinking now? I'm not sure I saw that. June Sauvignon Blanc. Rachel, I would love to do that. And I'm so sorry we haven't gotten to do anything yet. Um, she's, I believe, in Middleburg, Virginia right now in the other part of wine country. Uh, because she has ties to Boxwood Winery. Has anybody been to that cool winery? All right, any questions out there? People are loving rosé. Perfect. All right. Who here, and don't forget the link in here if you want to check out the Scout and Cellar wines. I'll repost that because Kristen is dying for you to try these clean crafted, crafted wines. And... You know, I think people do care more and more about knowing that it's organic, it's chemical, it's pesticides free. We care about it in our food. Why shouldn't we care about it in our wine? It's really, really important. And wine does not yet have labeling regulations. So it's hard to know, you know, what really is in there. Some people use fake coloring for their wine and powdered tannins and all kinds of different things that maybe aren't, um, maybe they're not super bad, but they're not naturally occurring in making that wine. And so it's great to know there are people like Scout and Cellar that are really focusing on that. And I don't know, is there anybody out here who's vegan? Did you know that a wines can be vegan or not? I don't know if you guys know that, but they can. Both of these are vegan wines. And what, what that means is, for instance, some people use egg whites to fine or, or get impure you know, solids out of the wine so it's clear like like this wine. And, you know, obviously egg whites is an animal product and that would make the egg, uh, the wine, because of the use of the egg whites, not vegan. And so these are both vegan. They make sure that no animal products or anything that has to do with an animal are used in the production of the wine. Kristen, online this wine is... Paired with a great pizza. I think that is that is really a great idea. I loved it with my uh, shrimp pesto pasta. But pizza and a great rosé is super fun too. So that thank you so much for that. The, Rachel likes vegan wine too. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> All right, who here raised your hand? I know it's not just me. 
prefers red wine over rosé or white. Am I the only one? I don't know. I kind of really, I mean, I love all wines. You know that, right? Um, but I really kind of let my mood and the time of day come into play with what I'm in the mood for, if you will. Um, Scout and Cellar Rosé. This is something I would love to drink, you know, during the early evening, shall I say day. Um, but when I'm getting sort of more towards bedtime, towards comfort time, that's when I'm thinking about my red wines. I'm typing in right now, before I taste this red, the web address, if you're interested in signing up to be with me for the Wine Down Wednesdays classes that start next week, you can go to thewinecoach.com slash events and you can look at each of the three classes, sign up for one, or there's a bundled product where you can sign up for all. And we'll just get tasting together for three weeks. And before you know it, we're going to be coming out of this thing and we're going to do it together. So um, let's taste the red. And then maybe even if you want to ask me a wine question or just rant about something that, you know, is bothering you right now, something that's driving you crazy, maybe your kids, have a teenager in the next room, I don't know, whatever it is, listen, I'm here for you. Throw it in the window. We'll talk through it. It's going to be fine. Um, Mary also uh, thinks that the time of day and uh, how she's feeling We'll talk about what she wants to drink. So Mary, what are you drinking right now? Um, we are all in this together. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Who's ready to find out about the Scout and Cellar Red? I love the Rosé Mendocino. The red we're going to taste, um, also from Mendocino, is called Fiddleneck. And hopefully you can see this uh, fairly well. Fiddleneck Syrah. And it is 90% Syrah and 10% Petite Syrah. Those two are two different grapes. While they're slightly uh, related, um, they, it's not just a smaller version of Syrah. It's a totally different grape. And in California, you can label the wine by the grape varietal as long as it has 75%. So as long as there's 75% Syrah in here, you could put 25% of other grapes and you don't have to disclose that on the label. But I do know this is 10% Petite Syrah in here. And what I really thought was cool, these are 30 to 40 year old vines in Mendocino. And that's the strength of what Scout and Cellar is doing is they're finding these amazing growers that are going to hand craft, hand harvest, chemical, pesticide free, all that great stuff. And the, and the people um, of this area know these fiddleneck flowers, they're gold flowers. And I guess if you could see this a little bit closer, you can see there's a little picture of the flower there. And just like in Provence, you have the lavender fields. Well, there, there are fields and fields of these yellow flowers, beautiful flowers, and they use it as cover crops. And what that means is in between the grapevines, these flowers are planted and they help ward off pests and things that can harm the vines. And so fiddleneck is the flower that grows in this area. These are 30 to 40 year old, so older vines. And this one is aged 10 months in neutral oak barrels. So oak barrels, but not giving it a lot of that heavy oak flavor. Syrah is one of my favorite grapes and I like a nice petite Syrah. So let's go ahead and try this together. Sarah, she's having crab. Uh, a cab, I'm sorry, I thought you were having crab because I love crab. <laughs> you're having a cab, uh, Corinne, and you love learning about wine. And I think you're gonna be with me next week, Sarah, I believe, and you should have received your list of wines. So uh, if you did not, hit me up an email ASAP. Um, all right, so this is just a little prelude to what we're gonna start doing next three weeks, and I hope you guys will get set up. All right, so we're gonna taste this Syrah. Let's go ahead, I, hopefully you can see this beautiful, beautiful purple ruby combination color. Um, one of the reasons why we swirl it up is to vaporize the alcohol so you can smell it better. And those of you who've been with me, with me before, you know I, I totally harp on this, but 80% of tasting wine is smelling. So we're gonna go ahead and see what we got here. And I hope you're impressed. I broke out my stemmed glasses, the really nice Riedels for you guys. I'm not drinking in my everyday 
uh, stemless. I really broke out the good stuff just for you guys tonight. Yum. Oh my gosh. Plum, like a concentrated um, black cherry in there, a little bit of spice on the finish, enough tannin, that's that dry astringency you get from red wine. It comes from the red grape skins. Enough of that that you have a little structure to this and a little um, dryness that makes you want to eat something with animal proteins. So with this, I would think steaks and burgers or maybe even if you just like to do a charcuterie plate because you don't feel like cooking for dinner, <laughs> this would be great with some Parmesan cheese, some aged Gouda. Um, we have a little kind of saying in the wine industry your hard wines with hard cheeses and soft wines with soft cheeses. So your whites and sparklings with the breeze and camemberts and goat cheeses, and then your harder cheeses, maybe with your red wines. Now there's always an exception to the rule because cheese and wine pairing is actually quite complex, it really is. All right, Sarah, you got it, I love it. Um, thank you so much, I don't know what I just, did but I, I'm still here <laughs> I think I'm still here anyway I clicked on something by mistake so if you want to join me starting next week uh, go to the winecoach.com events if you want to look at trying some of these scout and cellar wines from Kristen and the folks over at scout and cellar that are organic and clean crafted fiddle neck Syrah delicious fieldhouse rosé love and I still have two more that I haven't tasted that she sent me. So i um, super excited about those too. What wine questions do you have? While I'm here, I'd love to answer any wine questions you have. Um, or like I said, you can rant about anything you want, about being stuck indoors, homeschooling your kids, uh, having too much time with the husband, <laughs> whatever it is. All right. Jeannie's going to be there next week. Denise and Sarah, love it. Mary, if you're not already signed up, I hope you'll join us. We're going to have fun. And you know what? Let's talk for a minute. Nobody's asking any questions, but I think that's just because you're chilling out because it's been a long day. So let me bring up a little topic that I love to talk about in addition to these great wines, glassware. Now, I, I made the joke that we were talking about um, using my fancy glasses with the stem but the reason why you do want to invest in good glassware, and I have, you know, nice Riedel stemless as well. I, I'm not opposed to stemless, but a good quality stemless or stemmed is that real crystal is meant when you swirl to bring out more aromas and flavors in the wine. Whereas cheap manufactured glass that you get, you know, just um, maybe at a dollar store, you're not going to get as much out of that wine as you are with this thin rim that we have here with this glass and with the crystal that's here um, as well. Um, 1995 Grand Dame Rosé. How long is it good for? Um, you know what? I might start thinking about drinking that, Christine. Uh, I think I think it's time. How, how much color uh, change have you seen in the wine? I'd be curious about that. That's going to start to give you an indication. But I, w I would think that maybe <laughs> quarantine might be uh, a good occasion. Maybe the last day of quarantine might be a good occasion, Christine, for you to break that thing open. <laughs> and just tell me when and where, because I'm going to drive on up to New Jersey and... Uh, and do it with you. <laughs> Maybe have a little sip if you guys will let me. Uh, Sarah, is the Bordeaux better from the left bank or the right bank? Oh, I love that question. And we're going to taste some Bordeaux next week, Sarah. Um, it's not like one is better than the other, but what you need to know is on the left bank, they're making wines with more Cabernet Sauvignon, obviously blended in the other grapes, Merlot, Cap Franc, Petite Syrah, uh, and Malbec. But on the right bank, um, so left bank think places like St. Julian, um, Margot, Poyac. On the right bank, think places like uh, St. Emilion. Um, and those wines, pa uh, Pomerol, those wines having more Merlot and Cab Franc and to a lesser extent Cabernet Sauvignon. So if you think of that, the wines on the left bank are going to be more tannic, more structured, bigger, whereas you're going to get more fleshy, 
fruit. It's softer, not soft, but softer on the right bank than on the left bank. So it's about style. It's really about the style that you like the most. All right. Great questions. And hey, Uncle Don's here. Hi, Uncle Don. <laughs> I love it. Everybody's coming out of the woodwork. All right. So uh, glassware, you want real crystal, the thin rim, and the real crystal give you more out of the wine. It's going to taste better. Thick rimmed glasses. If I'm at a restaurant, can't wait to go to a restaurant again um, that has those clunky glasses. I almost don't even want to order a glass of wine because I know it's not going to taste as good as it should. And um, same thing with your white wine glasses. These are going to be smaller bowl because they're more delicate wines. All of them should be tulip shaped so that when you swirl and stick your nose, you're really trapping those aromas and able to get more out of the wine. Uh, so glassware to me is super important. Like I said, I have stemless and I have nice stemless. And lots of times I will use that, those just for an everyday dinner night uh, because these... I only wash by hand. I don't wash these in the dishwasher. And when you do wash your good glasses by hand, do not use a lot of soap because you don't want to leave a soap residue that's going to affect later the smell and taste of the wine. Um, I don't know if you've ever done that when you go out to dinner is smell your wine glasses first because that will, sometimes the wine glasses, if they're washed in the dishwasher or they were left wet to dry, can get like just a foul smell. Um, that is the worst when the wine glass is disappointing. I absolutely agree, June. I'm huge. Denise is having some Requiem Cabernet with a hint of chocolate. Mmm, that sounds good. I love that. And yeah, chocolate, um, toasty notes, coffee, vanilla, a lot of those things come from oak aging. And the, that's where the wine takes on those aromas and flavors. Um, so interesting. I, I'd love to um, find out how many months Denise yours was aged in oak. Uh, I swear wine does taste better in a great glass. Christine, you are exactly, exactly right. Um, what else do you guys want to talk about? Anything? Any other questions? I know we've been chatting here for almost a half an hour. The key is I'd love to do this with you every week for the next three weeks. We're going to start next week for an hour. We'll be doing a Zoom webinar, so I'll be live on the video screen. We'll have a chat screen just like this where you can ask questions, throw links. You'll either pick up the wine at Hair of the Dog in Easton if you live near me, or you'll get links to purchase the wines you'll need from wine.com. We'll live taste two wines every week, but I'll suggest four just in case you want to have extra wine in the house because I don't know about you, but extra wine has been coming in handy. So <laughs> I'll pick out um, some extras for you that I'll talk about, but we won't live taste so that between classes you can be tasting wines and continue learning. So it'll be about an hour long each week. You'll get all the details about how to log into it. And you can go to thewinecoach.com slash events and check that out and sign up for the classes. I hope you will. Um, I just love all you guys. I love sharing wine and demystifying wine one glass at a time. And for now, this is the only way I can do it. Um, I have been doing some virtual team building events. So if any of you guys have teams that are working remotely and you want to do something private just for your team, I did a great one with a computer company recently. They sent all their employees the wine. I came in at the end of their uh, video chat meeting and we just had a really great uh, personalized time for them. And so that's another way. I'm keeping the lights on. Uh, what about you guys? Um, can you suggest foods to pair each week? Yes, Christine, that's right. I know, I remember from Pick the Perfect Wine every time, you guys like to have your snacks already. So I will do that as well. Um, I'll send an email out probably um, end of this week, worst case Monday, um, with just some snacky things to go with each of the wines that we're tasting so you guys can set up your picnic. I know you guys like to do that. Perfect. I bring my wine glasses on vacation June. I love you. <laughs> you are a smart lady. Uh, if we're driving and I have been known to take a restaurant off my go-to list if they have bad glasses, I'm with you. Absolutely you should. I mean, they there are is a restaurant version of these Ritos that is quite uh, affordable. And I just don't understand why people, and there are other producers of, of nice glassware. I just don't understand why people don't do it because it really adds to the experience. Just like 
training the staff and having them be able to talk about and know the wines and open the bottle and you know make sure they're serving it to you correctly the glassware is huge and and the other thing is storage too you want to store your wine you know in a cool environment um and with about 70 percent humidity with no direct sunlight on it super important to the longevity of the wine if it's a natural corked wine like our fiddle neck uh, this had a cork in it you want it to be laying on its side if it's a screw cap like our uh, field house uh, rosé then you can store this upright it's fine it's not a big deal all right hey there cousin tommy <laughs> uh or is yeah is that cousin tom or is that your son tommy hmm i get confused um june thanks and june has riddles too all right uh hopefully you guys uh will sign up i don't know if you're still there i think you're still there but um thank you so much for joining me tonight for my little chat and i can't wait to hopefully see you in my wind down wednesdays starting next week so go to the winecoach.com events and thank you so much. Cheers, everyone. I hope you have a great night.